Hello, welcome everyone. We're very excited to have you all here today for our first community webinar. Thank you to all of you for taking the time to join us today from around the world in various time zones. My organization, Learning Equality, developed the Colibri ecosystem of products because we care deeply about equity. We have always focused on reaching the most marginalized and in light of the current pandemic, these communities are even harder to reach and the equity gap has further widened. Over the past few years, the members of the Colibri user community have connected in different ways and learning quality has created different outlets for members to share and learn from each other's experiences with Colibri. Given the various complexities to support learning in the midst of COVID-19, we thought the timing was right to hear directly from some incredible organizations who have been implementing Colibri during the pandemic and start conversations about how edtech can strengthen learning in a post-COVID-19 world. This is the first in what will be a series of Colibri, Colibri virtual learning spaces, an initiative designed to support learning equality's vision of building connections and sharing experiences within the Colibri community and with all of you. Traditionally, our approach has been to foster spaces for current and future Colibri users through smaller targeted virtual settings, depending on the needs and connectivity of those engaged. Given that this is slightly challenging through a large webinar format, we hope to have smaller virtual engagements in the coming months. So for today's session, we have a few objectives. One, we wanna showcase how organizations have adapted their educational programs using Colibri during the COVID-19 pandemic. Two, we wanna share lessons from members of the Colibri community and hear from their experiences. Three, we also wanna introduce potential applications of Colibri to both new and existing users. So whether you're a Colibri expert or you're just starting to learn more about its potential, we're very excited to have y'all here today. So let's get started. And with the agenda for today, first we'll introduce ourselves and then we will move right into our focus, which is around how Colibri and how our community has been influenced and impacted by the pandemic. Then we will turn it over to our panelists to hear from them and have a short Q&A. So to start introductions, I'll start with myself. My name is Navya and I lead our training strategy and South Asia implementations here at Learning Equality. I am co-facilitating today with my wonderful colleague, Laura, and we will ask her now to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Danforth. I'm the global community lead at Learning Equality and we are really excited to have you all here today. Thanks, Laura. We're joined by several other learning equality team members who will be helping to monitor our chat and answer any questions that come through throughout the course of the whole session. So stay tuned. So for our communication today on this webinar, we will use some key functionalities on Zoom. And so one of the first things that we wanted to share with you is that we'll ask questions using the Q&A feature and be sure to upvote on questions that have already been asked so that we have it at the top. Um, and reminder that attendees will remain muted, but feel free to use the chat feature for any comments and other technical assistance. And of course, lastly, feel free to engage on social media using our handle hashtag ColibriFly. So hopefully you can see all those functionalities on your Zoom and we'll be using them for our communication throughout. So before we get started, we also wanted to create a space to um, get to know each other in this webinar. So very quickly, before I start the overview of Colibri, um, in the chat, feel free to write your name, your organization, and the country that you currently live in, just so that we can understand um, who all are on the webinar today, and just to get to know each other a little bit more. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. And again, welcome. We see participants from Guatemala, from Cameroon, Chile, Canada, um, here from the US. And we see Spain from around the world, from Gujarat and Surat, Kenya, Uganda, Hyderabad, that's where I'm from, <laughs> Ghana, Mexico, Taiwan. So, 
from around the world. And it's really great to meet you all here today on this webinar. Great. And as you can see in the chat, you can see the other community members who have joined and feel free to look through the names as you get to know each other. And as we um, do that, we also wanted to share our poll for today, um, which is one to ask you if you have implemented Calibre is a part of your educational programs. And two, what is your role in your organization and schools? So I'm gonna give you one minute to finish writing your introductions in the chat and then to also um, fill out this poll. Thank you for filling out the poll. And as you can see, we have a mix of different people. Um, they, we have almost half who have implemented Calibri and half who haven't. Um, so we're excited to share a little bit more and learn from the other organizations who have been using Calibri. Um, we also have a mixed group of um, people on this chat on this webinar. So we have teachers, program staff, we have IT specialists, we also have folks from the government, and we also have other participants who are interested about Calibri. So exciting. All right, so now we will play a short video to highlight some of the commendable work organizations around the world have been doing while implementing Calibri amid the pandemic. And as you watch the video, I invite you to think about the similarities and differences you have within your own implementation models if you have already implemented Calibri and also learn a little bit more if you haven't. So Laura will play the video now. Thank you, Laura. It is so inspiring to see and learn from the various ways in which organizations have been using Calibri. Before we move on to the panel presentations, I would like to provide a brief overview of Calibri and how the product ecosystem was reprioritized during COVID-19. So Calibri is Learning Equality's adaptable set of open solutions specially designed to support offline first teaching and learning in low resource environments. Calibri supports learning in low resource environments where the internet is expensive, unreliable, or non-existent, leveraging existing hardware. And it is open source with adaptable do-it-yourself support materials. It is created for and responsive to diverse learning needs for personalized learning, through our educator support tools, our public content library, and tools to support alignment of relevant content resources. 
So Calibri's offline access and distribution model is designed to be responsive to the contextual realities where Calibri is needed and used. We've collaborated with partners who work in a variety of blended learning settings and hardware models, ranging from a rotation model with roving servers to a zero rated model with mobile phones. In a typical use case, many learning hubs can be created to provide educators with some of the pedagogical tools and support and learners with relevant learning resources that are traditionally only available in internet connected settings. With COVID-19, in-person use of Calibri was no longer possible. So implementations shifted their focus and that is what we'll hear more about today. So during COVID, we prioritized parts of our Calibri product suite by developing supportive guidance materials for learning at home, update our content library, develop training resources for curriculum alignment, and focused on developing functionality for facilitator support at a distance, even when connectivity is limited or non-existent. And as seen in the video earlier, we have seen many examples of how Calibri was leveraged to support learning amid the pandemic. These examples show innovation in accessing Calibri during social distancing, such as wide distribution on government's national servers, zero rated models by telcos, and low cost server distribution for use at home. So we're excited to now dive deeper into some of these examples and some more implementation models. So I'm now going to hand it over to Laura to introduce our panelists and learn more about their unique implementations. Great, thanks Navia. And before I introduce our speakers, I wanted to give some background on our relationship with these organizations. So they are each part of the Calibri Hardware Grants Program which is an opportunity that was funded by google.org to provide organizations with hardware to test out different models of using Calibri. And so this is a community of about 50 organizations who have been sharing their learnings and experiences with each other, as well as with learning equality about their unique uses to inform um, both their own work as well as of the Calibri roadmap. And our first speaker, Zainab Khan, is from Takmil. And Takmil supports out of school children through non formal community schools in remote areas of Pakistan. And they've been using both tablets and a projector model. And she will share how they have integrated Calibri into their curriculum and made different mm -hmm. adaptations during the pandemic. So I'm going to now turn it over to Zainab. Thank you. Hello everyone, um, I hope you're all doing good and it's my pleasure today to share with you the experiences of Takmil and how Calibri actually flew in the remote areas for out of school children in Pakistan and what lessons we learned in the COVID-19. So I would start off my uh, presentation. So basically Takmil, as uh, Laura mentioned, is an organization with the vision to exclusively enable the out of school children and to develop multi-level literacy starting from basic to primary and elementary through technology oriented and accelerated learning programs, but reaching out them in the marginalized and remote areas of Pakistan. And uh, if I specifically mention about the areas and regions where Calibri actually flew in Pakistan, there are eight non-formal community schools where the Calibri is functional, as you can see the geographical footprint uh, in the map. And if we talk about the target audience, there are around 500 out of school children. And these are the children who have never been to school in life. That means zero literacy. And they have age variations. As you can see in the graph, they are starting from the five years age and reaching out to 15 years. So it's a multi-age group of out of school children that is our target beneficiary. So if we talk about the hardware deployment model and how we implemented Calibri, first I would talk about the model one, that is 25 students or learner per session. And here we have a server, a laptop, where the Calibri is installed, configured with all the content, including the content that was of our own educational resources and digital curriculum. It is connected via a router to the client devices. These client devices are tablets, and these tablets then cater to per learner or a group of learners. 
So there are different pros and cons to this model. And if I mention the pros of this, that this model is rechargeable. As you can see, each component of this model can be recharged. And if it is charged, you do not need electricity while it is functional. It is portable, so you do not need to make it fixed in one place. You can take it from one class to another class. As the client devices cater to one learner or a group of learner, it enables the self-paced learning for the learners and also allows the coaches in Colibri to track the progress of the learners. But if I talk about the cons of it, in order to scale it up for a larger number of learners in one session, the cost is one factor. In addition to it, you have to be very good in managing the all the hardware components in order to make the class functional at one time. The second model that we implemented for students where in one session there are more than 25 learners, we try to make the model a bit simpler. That means one server and laptop connected directly with the mini projectors and projecting the signal on a screen. The pros to this is that the whole class is now acting as a single learning group. There's more class control and it has one pace. It serves a larger class and it has very less technical issues because you're directly connecting the mini projector with the server. The cons of it is that you cannot recharge each and every component of it. That means there is power consumption and high consumption for mini projector while you're making it functional. There is limited individual engagement. As you can see the other model, the students engage with the tablets, with their hands. But in this case, the technology engagement of learners is minimal and there is limited progress tracking for every learner individual progress. So there are some key findings that I would like to share and we conducted a Colibri impact survey of our learners. If you look at the numbers, you can see that 63% of the learners that we had, the children, they did not have any kind of digital skills or any experience with the tablets before joining that meal or before starting on the Colibri program. But the shift is there. And what we are seeing is that 99% learners, they enjoy the lessons, the video lessons more as compared to the traditional lessons. 92% enjoy because they understand video lessons better as compared to the traditional lessons. 93% of the learners are now more confident using the technology they have enhanced digital skills. 98% have increased comfort level with the use of gadgets and 98% um, students have been reported with increased attendances in non-formal community schools. I would like to re-emphasize here that for out of school children, retention is one of the challenge. There is one problem that we are facing and that is of the uh, barriers to language relevant content in the Colibria. And we are making sure that we uh, gather the content in the regional language to ease up this uh, obstacle also. So now I would like to highlight the challenges, the educational challenges in COVID-19 generally, and as well as in the Takmil perspective for these community of remote areas and out of school children. Of course, number one is challenge was the access. As soon as the schools closed, the first challenge was how you access the learners while they're sitting at home and how you continue the learning process and what kind of distance learning model will you implement so the learning process do not stop. The third process is the learning gaps. Of course, if the children are not coming for two to three months, that means huge gaps in learning. And when they are coming back, what they have already learned needs major reinforcement. Fourth challenge is the retention. There is a big fear and still a big concern that these children who are out of school might not get back in school and there's a retention challenge. Fifth one is the technology adoption generally by the facilitators and educators in Pakistan and their readiness to adopt technology in their day-to-day -day routine. Of course, psychological aspect is there because the psychological fears uh, by the students and by teachers have some learning barriers also. So I'll move on to the last slide where we have key lessons learned. So the first challenge that I mentioned of access, we mobilize the facilitators in the community so they remain in contact with the learners. So if we make the learners mobilize, this ensures the continuity of learning process. That means the distance learning was enabled through handmade study materials, which were given to the students through the facilitators in their visits. And when they would visit again, they would collect these handmade assignments. And I would encourage that if they 
there was a Calibri Android application, it would have been very helpful. As far as the learning gaps is concerned, when the schools were partially open, that means 30% to 50% attendance, socially distanced class were enabled through Calibri. That means each learner with the class um, client devices, but sitting in a class in a socially distanced manner. And peer-to-peer -peer learning and reinforcement was uh, mentioned because the extensive revision on the previous lessons was enabled through Colibri. The facilitators did not have to recreate all the lessons in order to revise and reinforce the previous learning. Retention, as I mentioned, that mobilization of facilitators ensured maximum retention. Our teachers were very comfortable and already trained on Colibri. So they were very convenient with the technology adoption. Psychological aspects and um, peers were overcome by the digital content. And there was a lot of content that we added from Colibri that actually include the awareness and information on COVID-19. And then we engaged the learners through different sports day and learning competitions to overcome these fears. So the next slide. Great, thank you so much, Zainab. Um, our next speaker is Snehanshu Shom from ThinkZone. Uh, ThinkZone is based in India and during COVID has involved families and the community in support of their home-based learning program. And so they've used Calibri as part of a blended approach for continued learning. Hi, thank you, Laura, for introducing me. Um, as the slide started, I cannot uh, see it here. Oh, can you see my slide? Um, yeah. Um, here, let me reshare. Just one moment, sorry. Oops. Okay, sorry, just one moment. Okay, can you see it now? Let me just pull it back up. Um, Hey, everyone, thanks again for joining. While we're waiting for the slides to come up, please continue to ask your great questions in the Q&A functionality, which you can find on the bottom of your Zoom. And then others can comment or we can upvote questions and they will be answered um, either at the end of this call or on our community forum later. Thank you. Great. Should I stop? Great, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, first of all, thanks Learning Quality for giving this opportunity to introduce our work. And uh, so I am Sneha Chu, uh, and I'll introduce you to what ThinkZone and Learning Equality has been doing in collaboration. Uh, so uh, ThinkZone is basically to the next slide. It looks like we might have momentarily lost Snehanshu. Schools. Um, I think perhaps we lost Snehanshu. Um, so while we are waiting for him to um, come back. Perhaps we can move to the next panelist, if that's okay, and then we will come back to him. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead and uh, we'll move on to Joshua Machinga. So Joshua um, is from Common Ground for Africa, and he was originally using Calibri as part of educational programming for two schools in Kenya. 
And in response to the pandemic, Common Ground mobilized their Calibri program to help support out of school learners from Kenya and South Sudan. Great, and Joshua, I think you will have to unmute. Perfect. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Learning Quality for giving us an opportunity to share our experiences using Columbia in uh, Kenya and in Southern Sudan. Basically, uh, before the pandemic, pandemic uh, we were using Columbia in our school. Uh, it was just unfortunate that uh, when we had just started using the program, uh, the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, rose up and uh, what we did was uh, we had to kind of uh, reimagine the way to reach uh, our students, both in Kenya and Southern Sudan. Um, when the president announced the closure of schools, we kind of uh, did not know what to do, but, uh, we, but we finally had to think of how to reach our students because most of them had gone to the camp and uh, some had gone back to their villages in the various, uh, various counties uh, throughout the country. So the question we had was, uh, next slide, slide please. The question we had was, uh, was 2020 academic year lost? Actually, the answer, the answer, actually, the answer is actually no. What we did, we kind of uh, thought of how to reach our learners using WhatsApp. Uh, and the challenge we had was uh, how could we distribute uh, the hard the the computers uh, between uh, the villages and uh, in the camp. We realized it was kind of a little bit difficult to, uh, to reach the learners in the camp, but we had to find a way how to do it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, so what we did was uh, initially we had back to uh, purchase the desktop uh, computers. We realized number one was that uh, they were kind of bulky and heavy and moving them around was a kind of a big challenge. And because of the curfew, we had to find a way on how to get uh, uh, these gadgets in the villages. So what we did, we had to organize with the trucks transporting food between uh, different camps and different villages. So we would um, get one computer on the truck and the truck would deliver the computer to the learners. Uh, what we realized is that uh, most villages in Kenya do not have electricity, do not have internet, so we had to find a way how to do it. Next slide, please. So what we did was number one was to, to, uh, to, to get routers for, for our learners. And also we asked uh, the telecom companies, that's a Farcom, Orange and Airtel, to link us, uh, to, give, to give us a kind of a, a low rated uh, uh, plan for us to, uh, to purchase for learners. So that's what we did. And finally, we had to get the computers in the, in the villages and uh, into the camps. Uh, then we, we, again, we realized that it, it could not work alone uh, because we had to like guide uh, learners in the camps, especially the Sudanese. What we did, we had to form, we had to form a WhatsApp group Call it, uh, we call it uh, Soma Nasi. So every time the, the student had a problem, what we did, we had to use uh, the WhatsApp to really technically help them solve the challenges they had. Next slide, please. So what we did, uh, my mind, number one uh, was, uh, we go to routers in the villages, uh, we, we shift, the, we, we shift the, the, the devices using the trucks, and uh, we, did, uh, we did the Soma Nasi uh, WhatsApp. So we, every, every day we are actually communicating with the learners on day-to-day -day basis. At times we'd send them questions, at times, at times we'd, 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 we'd encourage them kind of use uh, different uh, curricular contents, especially the, 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 the CAN, which was very good. And most of, most of the learners actually uh, quickly they had to adapt how to learn. So what we did at the end of the day, we never, we, we never lost uh, any time. The most learners were actually busy in their, in their camps or in the villages. What we did, we had to bring uh, about five, five, to five, five to 10 learners together because they were actually sharing a computer and each person had an opportunity about 15 minutes, then they, they were taking turns to learn. And that's, why, and that's, what, and that's how, how it, uh, it, it occurred. Next slide, please. Uh, what, what, we've, what we've realized that uh, is, it's actually possible to continue learning uh, despite the challenges of our COVID. We realized that uh, with co with the colloquy, one was uh, we had to learners had to continue preparing for the national exams. 
Two, the performance, both in local and region exams, of our learners actually has really in, increased by 60%. Uh, we've realized that most learners, especially in maths, are doing very well. At the moment, we have a mean of 88% in maths, almost 100%. Most of, the, most of the learners actually scoring 100% in maths because most of them kind of really like the, the CAN a method of teaching maths, and uh, that's what they used. Uh, most students kind of they have actually increased the knowledge about questions, uh, especially in mathematics. Uh, they have actually adopted and liked the technology. They're feeling well, kind of like back in school, but they really feel that uh, we need to continue to look in school most of the time. They enjoy uh, using the videos and uh, being on the computer uh, as opposed to the traditional way of teaching. Next slide, please. Uh, Columbia has been found as a powerful, a powerful tool to do bring change in schools. We've realized that uh, as soon as we started using Columbia, we've realized that uh, we've really increased our, our enrollment uh, from uh, 250 right now to over 500, increased by 100%. We're realizing that uh, most learners actually are eager to, to get uh, their fingers on the computer to learn more of uh, what, what to learn more, and they realize it's actually better for them. Uh, using computers as they learn more skills, especially typing, and uh, this is actually getting them ready uh, as, they, as they proceed either to high school or, or to university, because we have high school and both primary and high school. Next slide, please. Uh, we're really excited about uh, the colloquy, the changes that has brought in, um, brought in our schools. We, realize, we are really realizing that uh, it's actually possible uh, to continue learning when the teachers are told either this is somewhere else or, or they're out of school or attending, uh, attending to learners in various places because of COVID. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Joshua. That was excellent. Um, and now I see we have Snehanshu back. So I am going to um, go back to his slides and then I will um, turn it over to him. Uh, the next slide. Hi, sorry guys, uh, internet glitch. Uh, so yeah, uh, so as I was saying, so basically things on works uh, towards improving the educational outcomes of children from under-resourced communities. And uh, we have a variety and we have like a 360 degree model, uh, like through which we kind of, you know, enable community educators, Anganwadi workers, parents and school teachers to deliver quality early grade education programs. Anganwadi is basically a early, early grade childhood, a early, early childhood uh, care center. So in our 360 degree model, we have like uh, things on mobile applications some community engagement modules, uh, training and learning content workshops for educators, as well as our primary focus is on activity-based teaching methodology, which, which is where Colibri comes. So activity-based uh, teaching methodology, we uh, encourage teachers to you know, take up a lot of activities, uh, which makes learning fun. And in these activities, uh, there are some modules about you know, storytelling, there are modules about video content. And this is where I think Colibri has been a great support to us. Uh, can you move to the next slide? So uh, just like, you know, uh, throwing it out, like, you know, we have seen like with, with the support from Colibri and uh, other partners as well, we have seen a tremendous improvement in our language, language and arithmetic scores of our primary grade students, as well as we have seen like, you know, our early childhood children, like who are between three to five years, they have developed age appropriate skills. And this has been because of like a 360 degree approach that we take towards our programs. So uh, coming to the elephant in the room, like how we uh, how we are working with Colibri. Uh, so pre-COVID situations, what, what would happen was like our, uh, our team members would go to these uh, learning centers, schools, and Anganwadis and villages, and uh, they would do a storytelling and reading sessions using Colibri. So basically we use tablets as well as projectors to uh, showcase our storytelling sessions, our stories over there. And a quick shout out to Pratham Book Story V which is a channel on Colibri who have provided us with amazing regional stories uh, and also like we are using Colibri, we are also using Colibri uh, uh, like a module of Colibri that is the quiz module to track the progress of children 
like how they were to how they were performing it as the story telling sessions and leading sessions uh even for our educators we were doing a skill development workshops and uh, with with the help of colibri hardware and projectors uh, as well as we had uh, assessments to track track progress of these uh, of our educators uh, through this as well um the next slide uh i'm just uh, throwing it out like the pictures of how uh, you know colibri and our technology applications and these devices are used in our learning centers you can see like these amazing stories uh that are being presented uh, for children and they read these stories out and they uh, like we see, we see that the listening skills how how good are the listening skills how good are the are the reading skills and we have been working like that uh, pre covid situation yeah so now we come to how uh, how are we working on you know like post covid how we are working with colibri so what we have done is like uh, we have taken these amazing stories and amazing content uh, that are provided on the open platform on colibri and we have made these stories available to parents through our home based learning program so through our home based learning program we are providing parents uh, because children are now not going to schools and anganwadis right now they are shut right now so they are at home and we are providing them with uh, these stories and amazing activities that they can do at home and uh, we have seen like such an inc increase in parents that are uh, like coming up to us and saying that we want more activities we want more stories because uh, like uh, they they are really enjoying the time that they are spending with their children in education uh we are also providing like uh, our teachers are also using this uh, hardware at uh, at their homes and they have collaborated the really nice stories according to levels of children and they are providing this to parents using whatsapp or by calling them directly so we are sharing these stories videos and learning materials directly to parents so that they can take up this and they can uh, perform this at their home uh, apart from this we also have like a lot of uh, training sessions and quizzes uh in which like uh, our quiz modules are also used the next slide so uh, this is these are uh, some snapshots of how you know like home based learning program is being working at home these are some of the pictures of activities and you can see some parents reading these stories or like they are listening to these stories and how they are telling these to children uh, at their home and this has been like an incredible success because now we are partnering with the with the government of uh, with the state government of odisha and uh, we are currently uh, using this platform to reach out to 10000 children in the state the next slide so i think uh, some of the learnings that would be there would be definitely that there is a digital divide and uh, we need uh, like the like there is no internet connectivity in the places that we are working and we definitely need a blended approach in the future where like uh, our where, where like the online and the offline approach work together parents have been a very big part of the whole program and we would definitely uh, want and we would uh, advocate that you know parents be a huge part of the learning process of children and technology uh, in the form of colibri is great like open resources open stories this is something that we need for our curriculum the next slide just uh, like uh, at the end like you know uh, like we have some of these impact stories you know be uh, like kids who could not attend school at all during the pandemic and now uh, their parents are helping them to read stories read activities uh, through ivr phone call and sms like they they are reaching, uh, we are reaching out to uh, the parents with these activities these stories and they are learning even during the pandemic and they are sharing so great words about it even a par uh, our parent of one of our parent ramesh uh, says that you know like he uh, he is so encouraged to you know like right now being a part of this program and uh, like you know uh, getting the opportunity to teach children even uh, through this home based learning program so uh, i'll just like thank learning quality like uh, to provide us with such great content and you know the platform so that we can use this opportunity to reach out to children and uh, like thank you that's that's about it great thank you so much sehanju for that excellent presentation um we have one speaker left and our last speaker is mincy ramos from shoulder to shoulder and shoulder to shoulder had been using colibri for their in school programming in honduras prior to the pandemic and then they shifted gears to become early testers of the new colibri android app to support learners at home so i will turn it over to mincy's 
Hello, everyone, and I am very thankful for this great opportunity to share with you all what we are doing to enhance the education system during this hard time using Colibri. But you may be wondering, what is shoulder to shoulder or what is shoulder to shoulder doing? Next slide, please. Okay, shoulder to shoulder have been uh, in Honduras for 30 years and have worked to enhance the educational system as a priority for the last five years delivering digital and offline curriculum to the schools. Our program covers the southern region of Intibuca, known as La Frontera, which is a hardship area designed by the FAO as the Central American Right Corridor. Over the span of our work, the organization has engaged in broad program named Free to drive empower, empowerment in educational outcomes by the application of USA technology and methods. In addition to this, to this we have a digital library, library with over a thousand books ready for the kids to read. Um, next slide, please. So our response during this hard time, how shoulder to shoulder has been responding to this situation in Honduras? Our target program in response to the lack of educational resources during the pandemic. We specific, specifically target the students who live in remote settings to encourage independent learning, ensuring that the students didn't drop off at school. In total, this year, um, uh, we distribute 100 tablets among the area. So next, next slide, please. Okay. Now, it is our pleasure to share with you all some of uh, our successes that we had during this year. First, we gave a tool for the students who weren't able neither to buy a smart device, neither to buy internet packages. Students had access to a digital library with more than a thousand books. We have more than a library more in our library, but due to the storage in the tablet, it was impossible for us to install all of them. Students were able to watch multiple times the videos without our spending on internet. Students complete their assignments on time and even help their peers to understand the topics, becoming community tutors. A mother shared how proud she was of her daughter tutoring her siblings. If you see the picture here in the right. Um, with the help of the tablet apps, her little brother, who is six, uh, sorry, five years old, he learned how to read and how to write. A students participated in the math Olympic, classifying at the stage level, and were unable to move forward due to the power of age. Next slide, please. Uh, as we all know, whenever we uh, implement a project there, there are some difficulties. Some of the challenges that we face uh, were that first, getting in communication with the teachers to get information they wanted in the topic took some time. In many cases, they were giving us a lot of topics and we have the content, but the storage in the tablet was limited to 64 gigabytes. To keep track of the students' involvement, we collect usage reports every month. These documents help us to understand the effectiveness of the project. It includes time and all the topics they were watching and their outcomes. For students who had never owned a device, um, they, were, they were families afraid to have a tablet. But uh, Dr. Dick said, who is uh, our uh, director, he said, those are a smart risk. So we took those risks. We have some difficulties collecting tablets. In some cases, we did home visits. A few tablets got damaged and some of the SD cards card were lost, but it just was part of the process. So we were not too much worried about that. Next slide, please. Okay, overall, Overall, students improve their grades, learn about managing a tablet, and some parents learn how to distribute, distribute the tablet usage among their kids. They learn 
experience was not only directed to one student or to one own family, but also a community. What matters is the knowledge and a skill students gain during the time where everything seems to be lost. It is a great joy to see the success of all the efforts done during these difficult times. And we hope to do more next year. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Mincy's. Um, it's also worth noting that the feedback from Shoulder to Shoulder and others will help to inform the ongoing development of the Calibri Android app. Um, I know there's been a few questions about this so far in the chat, and this will be released publicly later this year. And now, thanks to our panelists, we've heard a range of experiences adapting Calibri during the pandemic, but I'm sure that there are questions. So with our remaining time, we'll be now shifting to a Q&A. Um, so please write any questions that you have for our speakers in the Q&A box that is located in your Zoom controls. And we also invite you to click on the upvote button for questions that you'd like. Um, and the remaining ones we will be posting to the Learning Quality Community Forum as a follow-up to the webinar. And while we are waiting for your questions, I'm going to start with one. Um, so as a former teacher, I'm especially interested in how educators can support learning at a distance, even without connectivity. Um, so for one of our panelists, I'm going to ask Zainab to answer this one. Um, recognizing the importance of educator engagement and the different added challenges that arose in navigating teaching during a pandemic, what were some of the strategies that you adopted to implement Calibri in supporting teaching practices during this time? Thank you very much, Laura. First of all, amazing presentation. I'm so glad that uh, uh, when you're dedicated and passionate, you make things possible, even in pandemic. So I would like to mention two strategies. One strategy, uh, while the schools were closed and the facilitators were mobilized in the community in keeping in mind the safety consideration and reaching out to the learners at their homes, handing over the study material, and then revisiting them after a period of time, and then collecting the study material. That is to, there were two to three main objectives of it. The number one was to ensure that we remain in contact with the learners so they do not drop out of these schools. We know that they are keeping up with the learning process and they do not have major learning gaps. Second strategy was the one when they are back in school and these were partially functional schools. So what is a partially functional school is that there is not 100% attendance says they're 50% or 30%. That means you have lesser students and you can enable a socially distanced and safe environment. So what happens in that Colibri, there were two challenges. One that you enable that socially distanced environment by handing over the client devices to the learners, make them sit at a safe distance. And this is how the learning environment is enabled. Number two is that there are learning gaps. That means one student might forget one concept, the other student might be forgetting another concept, but your client devices have all the lessons. The facilitator or educator do not have to give individual attention to each student. So each client device, each learner have their own reinforcement or revision targets. Okay, you have to take care of these concepts, revise these, next with learning target will be this. So reinforcement was easy. It was very easy for the uh, students to fill in those gaps because of the prolonged two to three months not coming to school. Uh, these are three to four strategies that enabled us uh, to cope with the learning challenges in COVID-19. Great. Thank you so much, Zainab. Um, and it looks like we also have a question for Joshua. Um, so Joshua, what were the biggest difficulties you faced that you could solve via WhatsApp groups? Was it mostly coordination? And thanks for sharing, fantastic work. Yeah, the most difficult thing that uh, we actually faced was, uh, especially with, with, with the kids in the camp, was about uh, the coordination. Some were like in Kambuan and uh, they had to like walk about four kilometers away. And uh, they also had challenges on how like, on, uh, they, also, they also had challenges on how to access the kind of the content. Some of them said, okay, we, are, we want, to, want to do a hand, 
then they could not access uh, the content on, offline. So that's how we kind of like helping them through uh, 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 through WhatsApp. Uh, again, uh, again, also had issues about exams. Uh, exam, they wanted, they also wanted to kind of like after using colloquial, they wanted to test themselves. So what we did, uh, we would uh, get exams, take photos of them, then we, we would mail, mail exams to them. Then they would actually practice uh, using using the ideas that they actually learned from uh, using colloquial. Great, perfect, thank you. Um, looks like there's a few more questions. Um, one is uh, from, from Tom. Uh, the question is, it would be lovely to hear about the content used during these projects. Was it taken from the existing Calibri database? Was it curriculum aligned? Was additional content sourced and used in these projects? Um, I'll open up to any of our panelists, maybe if one, who hasn't spoken before would like to jump in. There's an additional question that's also come in related to how you've tailored content to the particular context. So if you could also touch upon that, that would be great. And I would share one of our experience. Okay, go ahead. So there are two things. One is the whole Calibri library. It's a whole content and you can actually explore the content for the learner groups and the age groups. That, but the other thing is that in our case, we have made an accelerated curriculum for out of school children to develop the literacy from basic to primary, then grade six, seven, and eight. That means daily lessons with student learning outcomes. So what we have done prior to Calibri that we have made our digital content, taking the video lessons from open educational resources, aligning them with each lesson on a particular day. So for every day, whatever concept they're learning, there is a lesson, video lesson, two to three video lessons on that concept. And we have made these Calibri uh, Techneal channels on Calibri Studio, imported into the Calibri, and now they are part of core curriculum on a daily basis. Great. Anything that our other panelists would like to add? Otherwise, I can move to another question. For yeah, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Joshua. Now, what I was saying for us, uh, we actually use uh, the content uh, on the Calibri uh, program. It did not tailor because we are, we, we do not have the opportunity to do that. But at school, yes, uh, we kind of are integrating what uh, the, the curriculum based on uh, 8404 system uh, of education in Kenya. But basically, in, in, uh, in the camp, we had to use what, what is online. Thank you. Mincy, did you have anything to add? I would just say, I was just going to say that for us, uh, we have uh, an agreement with the MO, which is the um, educational department. So we get the digital books and we install in the tablets, uh, specifically just the topic the teacher asked for. So we put the videos and the topics. So in that way, teachers have their books and students have their books and the videos to complete their assignments. Thanks. Great, wonderful. Um, we have time for maybe one or two more. Um, one is a question for Snehanshu. How did you measure your improvements? Were the stats you shared control groups or when compared to previous results? Amazing work. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, I'll, I'll, I would really like to uh, bring forward this point. So, uh, the stats that I shared were with obviously pre-COVID and that uh, were not related to this program that we are doing. But uh, so what we're doing right now is like we have a lot of educators uh, like who are continuously talking with parents, like, you know, communicating with parents at the end of every week. And they are taking up data, uh, like every data that is possible, like, you know, are the parents listening to these activities? Are the parents performing these activities? And they also take up like small quiz segments with children that they answer over the call only. So they uh, ask simple questions, short questions, uh, related to the activities that are sent, related to the curriculum that is said, and these and the uh, the outcomes, the whatever the data that is collected, we are uh, capturing it, and a major report would be published in a meanwhile also, which we are collaborating with researchers. But in general, the data is collaborated, and uh, we are you know like analyzing it and making our program better through it. 
Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some of the other questions we are going to address on the Learning Equality Community Forum as a follow up um, to this, which we will share a link to um, in our follow up email. I am going to move ahead to our closing because we are almost out of time. Um, so I'm going to reshare my deck and we will wrap up. So thank you again for all of the great questions and then to our panelists for their wonderful presentations and discussion. Um, there are, I think, a number of important key takeaways from our speakers, both from their presentations and then their discussion. Um, so as we prepare to kind of wrap up, I just want to highlight how we're thinking about different implications for government, for educators, and then also for implementing organizations. Um, I'm not going to read them all out here, but I would like to give everyone a minute to just invite you to add your own key, key takeaways in the chat as well, um, because we would love to hear your thoughts about what you've learned and what was most significant for you from these yeah. Um So I will uh, give you all a minute now just to share your thoughts in the chat. And as you're writing and reflecting, we wanted to just close today by reiterating our initial goals in starting this Calibri Virtual Learning Spaces initiative, which is to really create more opportunities for the Calibri community to connect and to learn from each other. So this won't always take the form of a webinar, but what's great is that we've already had several people emailing us wanting to um, get involved and saying they'd be interested in speaking at a future event um, about their work in using Calibri. So now our hope is that we can create more opportunities for people to share in different ways. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, um, please stay in touch and um, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. So we'll just, I can't see the chat box, um, but I'll give everyone a few seconds to finish sharing any thoughts. We have a few share backs and takeaways. I see um, someone said they're waiting to um, learn more about the Calibri Android app and how that will transform everything. <laughs> um, and then there are a few more questions that are popping up as well, but really ex excited. And um, thank you again to all the panelists for sharing your experiences. Okay, and we're just about out of time then. So we will close. Um, one last thank you again to our panelists today and everyone for joining us. Um, as we depart, we are going to end with a Calibri fly with our panelists. So this is something that we uh, love to do during our training sessions, just to close and leave on a uh, just good note with good energy. So um, I'm going to say Calibri, and then I'm going to ask our panelists to unmute and respond with fly. Um, and then that will be the end of our webinar. So to our panelists, please unmute. And Calibri. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank, Thank you. For Thank you for us. the opportunity. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.